Hello and welcome to the online service of Nambour Anglican Parish. Through this online service, we pray you find encouragement in your walk with God. May God bless you today as you join your spirit with God's spirit in worship and fellowship. Over the years, I've learned a few tricks about reading biblical texts, because they're not easy. You can't just go, oh, I got it. <clears throat> the first reading describes a pivotal moment in the history of the then relatively new nation of Israel. So here's my trick. What was it like to be there, to have it all unfold before your eyes without any idea as to how this might play out in the short term, let alone in the long term? No safety net. Just see it through as best you can and live to tell the tale. Someone, of course, wrote it down. And we have the history. And that's how it is with the first reading. Background from earlier in that chapter of 1 Samuel. The word of the Lord came to Samuel. I regret that I made Saul king, and he has not carried out my commands. Samuel's response is recorded here. Samuel was angry, and he cried out to the Lord all night. That's poignant in itself, isn't it? Nevertheless, Samuel obeyed the Lord, and though Saul completed his reign as king, the two were at odds until Saul died. Nevertheless, our reading describes how Samuel grieved over Saul at the beginning of chapter 16. So it was one of those relationships, wasn't it? <clears throat> but note, Samuel obeys the Lord and effectively, wait for it, betrays Saul by anointing David as king. Is this not treason? Does it not risk, at the very least, inciting a civil war? Yet by the grace of God, all went well, or well enough. Another feature stood out, for, out to me from the first reading. When Samuel saw Jesse's son Eliab, he was impressed. But, here I quote, the Lord said to Samuel, do not look on his appearance or on the height of his stature, because I have rejected him. The Lord does not see as mortals see. They look on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. This led me to the notion of spiritual wisdom. Often I conclude my emails with the sign off, wisdom, grace and peace. Some of you have had emails from me and you've seen it. Qualities that I hope for you and qualities that I hope for in myself. Wisdom, grace and peace. In the first reading, we see Samuel's spiritual wisdom. He discerns that God has rejected Saul. His obedience, anointing David, and the poignant comment that Samuel grieved over Saul. 
Now to the Gospel reading and its two seed parables. Now there's a proverb that familiarity breeds contempt. Well, that's only partly true. The other thing familiarity breeds is anaesthetic. We no longer notice. We become so used to seeing or hearing something, we mentally switch off. And we all do this. So familiar, familiarity, you just, uh, don't notice, part of the everyday. Now, Jesus' parable, or parables, we all know that seeds grow into plates and plants and hopefully in their turn bear fruit <coughs> and then generate a new generation to do likewise. Now it's too easy for us to sip, slip quickly into seeing Jesus' parable as one about fruitfulness. Go out and make more disciples, spread the word. That's how the gospel gets around. That's only part of the substance of the parable. It can certainly bear that interpretation. <clears throat> but this is a new insight for me too. I don't think it's primarily, Jesus' parable, about fruitfulness at all. I think Jesus here was drawing the disciples' attention to something that everyone in their agrarian society and we today take for granted. It's just what seeds do. That's the miracle. Seeds are either viable or they're not. And children learn from parents or preschool that if you put a viable seed in a pot of soil and give it water and light, it'll be a goer. And kids have that, and you see this in preschools and, and kindergartens and the like. <coughs> the, the, the fascination of it, the first little sprout and then the stalk, and then a little leaf, and, you know, the growth. Now, that is a transformation. It's a whole qualitative difference. It's no longer a seed that you keep in a packet. It's something that brings life, has life, develops life. Now, St. Paul expressed this in a different way in his second letter to the Corinthians. If anyone is in Christ, they become a new creation. See the connection? The seed germinates germinated and bedded in the new garden of Eden, which is the kingdom of heaven. I don't think that's stretching it too much. And I had not seen that connection before. Now, a few weeks, uh, well, maybe months ago, I'm not sure, um, Jesus' Beatitudes, I set as homework for you some time ago. Uh, and I described them as desiderata for the world weary in a weary world. What's the transformation going to look like from seed and husk and nothing much but just sitting there? What's it going to look like when it germinates? Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, they'll be comforted. Blessed are the meek, they will inherit the earth. 
Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, they will be called the children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Once the seed germinates, it has to survive in its environment. That's our task, to survive, to thrive, and to grow in such faith that people look at this plant and say, you know, there's something there that I would like. I appreciate that plant and I want something of its life. In the name of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. May the God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you what is pleasing in his sight, and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace, filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Christ. Amen.
you for watching today. We hope it has been an encouragement to you for your spiritual life. Please subscribe to this channel. Also, if you would like to support us financially, you can click the link in the description below. Thank you for joining us. God bless.